If you're going to get an assassin, if you're going to get somebody to go do something, you divide the mind. Fascinates me about cases like the assassination of Robert Kennedy, where Bernard Diamond, on examining Sirhan Sirhan, found that he had total amnesia for the killing of Robert Kennedy, but under hypnosis could remember it. But despite suggestions he would be able to consciously remember, could not remember a thing after he was out of hypnosis. I'd love to examine Sirhan Sirhan. Um, it appears that below this we've got some other layers. One is called green programming, it appears. And isn't it interesting that the doctor's name is Dr. Green? One of the questions I'll ask in a way to not contaminate is, after I've identified some of this stuff is there and they've given me a few right answers about what some of it is, if there were a doctor associated with this programming and his name were a color, you know, like Dr. Chartreuse or something, if his name were a color, what would the color be? Now, once in a while, I've had some other colors mentioned in about three or four patients that I did felt were trying to dissimulate in some way, and I don't really believe had this. In one case, I got another color, and I found out later it was a doctor with, whose name was a color who was being trained by Dr. Green almost 30 years ago, and he supervised part of the programming of this woman under this doctor. Remember, one woman couldn't come up with anything. No, Walter would speak up with anything. I said, okay, and we went on to some other material. About two minutes later, she said, Green, you mean Dr. Green? Um, we found this all over. There appears to be some green programming below that, and I suspect that it has a structure sort of like this, that you get down to fewer and more essential programs the deeper you go. Below green programming is ultra green. and the green tree. Kabbalistic mysticism is mixed all into this. If you're going to work with this, you need to pick up a couple of books on the Kabbalah. One is by a man named Dion Fortune, D-I-O-N Fortune, F-O-R-T-U-N-E, called the Kabbalah with a Q. Dion Fortune. Another is called is by Anne Williams hyphen Heller. Anne Williams Heller. And it is called uh, the Kabbalah with a K. K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H, I believe. It's a $10 quest book. Anne Williams Heller. H-E-L-L-E-R. Anne Williams Heller. The Kabbalah. K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. I knew nothing about the Kabbalah. It was interesting, a patient had sat in my waiting area, um, got there considerably early, and drew a detailed, multicolored Kabbalistic tree over two years ago. And it took me two months to figure out what it was. <laughs> Finally showing it to somebody else, I said, you know, that looks an awful lot like a Kabbalistic tree. And that rang a bell with some esoteric in an old book, and I dug it out. That was the background of Dr. Green. Now, the interesting thing about the green tree is his original name was Greenbaum. What does Greenbaum mean in German? Green tree. Ultra green and the green tree. I've also had patients who didn't appear to know that his original name was green volunteer that there were parts inside named green, Mr. Greenbaum. Now, let me give you some, uh, some information. I'll just leave that up for a minute. Let me give you some information about parts inside that may be helpful to you if you're going to inquire about these things. Because my experience is one part will give you some information and either run dry or get defensive or scared and stop. And so you punt and you make an end run and you come around the other direction and you find another part. I'll tell you several parts to ask for and ask if there's a part by this name. And by the way, when I'm screening patients to fiddling around with this, I throw in a bunch of spurious ones and ask, is there a part inside by this name and by that name, <laughs> as a check on whether or not it appears genuine. For example, in addition to the core, I ask, is there a part inside named wisdom? 
Wisdom is part of the Kabbalistic tree. Wisdom, I've often found, will be helpful and give you a Sorry about that. This is how the original audio is. Is there a part inside named Diana? I mean, I may throw in all sorts of things. Is there a part inside named Zelda? I've never encountered one yet. <laughs> The Ocarina of Time. So the if you don't know about that. <laughs> Just to see what kind of answers we get. I try and do this carefully. Diana is a part that in the Kabbalistic system is associated with a part called the foundation. You can be fascinated to know that, that remember the process church? Uh, Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, was killed by the Manson family who were associated with the Process Church. And a lot of prominent uh, people in Hollywood were associated. Then they went underground, the book saying about 78, and vanished. Well, they're alive and well in southern Utah. We have a thick file in the US, uh, Utah Department of Public Safety documenting that they moved to southern Utah. North of Kanab, bought a movie ranch in the desert, renovated it, expanded it. Uh, built a bunch of buildings there, carefully monitored so that very few people uh, go out of there and um, no one can get in, and uh, changed their name. And a key word in their name is foundation, the foundation, and there's some other words. And um, foundation is part of the tree. So you can ask, is there something inside known as the foundation? I might ask other things to throw people off. Is there something known as the sub-basement? <laughs> you know? Well, maybe they'll conceive of something else. Is there something known as the walls? There are a variety of questions you can come up with to sort of screen some things. I've also found that there will often be a part called Black Master, a part called Master Programmer, and that there will be computer operators inside. How many of you have come on to computer things? In patients. There will typically be computer operators. Computer operator black, computer operator green, computer operator purple. Sometimes they'll have numbers instead. Sometimes they'll be called, called systems information directors. And you can find out the head one of those. They'll often be a source of some information for you. I will ask inside, is there a part inside named Dr. Green? You'll find that there are if they have this kind of programming, in my experience. And usually with a little work and reframing, you can turn them and help them to realize that they were really a child part who's playing a role and they had no choice then, but they do now. And that they played their role very, very well, but that they don't have to continue to play it with you because they're safe here. And that in fact, if the cult simply found out that you talked to me, and that you had shared information with me, you tell me, what would they do to you? To emphasize that the only way out is through, and that they need to cooperate and share information and help me, and that I'll help them. So all of these parts can give you various information. Now, they have tried to protect this very carefully. Let me give you an example with Ultra Green. I've discovered this. Uh, by the way, I, I used to think this programming was only in non, or only in bloodline people. I've discovered it in bloodline people, but it's a bit different. They don't want it to be just the same. And I don't think you'll find deep things like ultra green and probably not even uh, green programming at this deep uh, or with non bloodline people. But let me tell you something that I discovered first in a non bloodline and then in a bloodline. We were going along, and a patient was close to getting well, uh, approaching final integration in a non-bloodline, and she suddenly started hallucinating. And her fingers were becoming hammers and other things like that. And so I used an affect bridge, and we went back. 
And we found that what happened was that they gave suggestions that if she ever got well, got to a certain point, she would go crazy. And the way they did this was they strapped her down and they gave her LSD when she was eight years old. And then when she began hallucinating, they inquired about the nature of the hallucinations so they could utilize them in good Ericksonian fashion and build on them. And then combine the drug effect with powerful suggestions. If you ever get to this point, you will go crazy. If you ever get fully integrated and get well, you will go crazy like this and will be locked up in an institution for the rest of your life. And they gave those suggestions vigorously and repetitively. Finally, they introduced other suggestions that rather than have this happen, it would be easier to just kill yourself. In a bloodline patient then, as I began inquiring about deep material, the patient started to experience similar symptoms. We went back and we found that identical things were done to her. And this was called the green bomb, B-O-M-B. -B. Lots of interesting internal consistencies, like that play on words with Dr. Greenbaum, his original name. Now, in this case, it was done to her at age nine for the first time. And then only hers was different. Hers was a suggestion for amnesia. If you ever remember anything about ultra green and the green tree, you will go crazy. You will become a vegetable and be locked up forever. And then finally the suggestions added and it'll be easier to just kill yourself than have that happen to you. If you even remember it, at age 12 then, three years later, they used what sounds like an Amatol interview to try to breach the amnesia and find out if they could. They couldn't. So then they gave her, strapped her down again, took and uh, gave her something to kind of paralyze her body, gave her LSD, an even bigger dose, and reinforced all the suggestions. Did a similar thing at the age of 16. So these are some of the kind of booby traps you'll run into. There are a number of cases where they've combined powerful drug effects like this with a suggestion to keep us from discovering some of this deeper level stuff. What's the bottom? Your guess is as good as mine. But I can tell you that I've had a lot of therapists who were stymied with these cases. They were going nowhere. In fact, someone here that I told some basic information about this to in Ohio a couple of months ago said it opened all sorts of things up <laughs> in a patient who'd been going nowhere. And that's a, an often common thing. Um, I think that we can move down to deeper levels, and if we deal with some of the deeper level stuff, it may destroy all the stuff above it. But we don't even know that yet. Some of the patients I'm working with, we have pretty much dealt with a lot of the top level stuff, and I'll tell you how we've done some of that. We'll take and erase one system, like Omega. Then we will have a huge ab reaction of all the memories and feelings in a fractionated ab reaction associated with those parts. I typically find, and I'll say to them, now that we've done this, are there any other memories or feelings that any parts that were omega still have? The answer is usually no. At that point, I will say, I usually find that at this point in time, the majority, if not all, of those parts that used to be omega no longer feel a desire or need to be different, realizing that you were split off originally by them and want to go home to marry and become one with her again. And I use the concept often now, which came from a patient of going home and becoming one with her. Going back from whence you came is another phrase I'll use with them. Are there any omega parts inside who do not feel comfortable with that or have reservations or concerns about that? If there are, we talk to them, we deal with them, a few may not integrate. My experience is most of the time they'll integrate and we may integrate 25 parts at once in a polyfragmented complex MPD. I think it is vitally important to ab-react the feelings 
before you go on. Also, many patients, it hasn't seemed to matter the order we go in, but I found a couple where it has. If it doesn't seem to matter, I'll typically go omega, then delta, because they have more violence potential, then gamma, to get rid of the self-deception stuff. If that isn't working, or, or rather, yeah. if um, well, what, what I will do before I just assume anything and do that is once we've done omega and showed them that success can occur and something can happen and they feel a relief after, I will say to them, uh, I want to ask the core through the fingers, is there a specific order in which programs must be erased? Now, maybe it doesn't matter, but is there a specific order in which they must be erased? Most of the time I found no. There are cases where we found yes. I recommend doing one or two or three of those because they'll produce relief and a sense of optimism in the patient. But then I would recommend starting to probe for the deeper level things and getting their input and recommendations about the order in which we go. Question. What has been the typical age and the typical gender of this type of person? I know of this being found in men and women. Most of the patients I know of MPD ritual abuse who are being treated are women, however. But I know of some men being treated where we have uh, found this. Um, a while back, I was talking to a small group of therapists somewhere. I told them about some of this. And in the middle of talking about some of this, all the color drained out of one social worker's face. And she obviously had a reaction, and I asked her about it, and she said, I I'm working with a six-year-old boy, no, five-year-old boy. And she said, just in the last few weeks, he was saying something about a Dr. Green. And I went on a little further, and I mentioned some of these things, and she just shook her head again. I said, what's going on? And she said, He's been spontaneously telling me about robots and about Omega. <laughs> I think you will find variations of this and that they have changed it probably every few years and maybe somewhat regionally to throw us off in various ways. But that certain basics and fundamentals will probably be there. I have seen this in people up into their 40s including people whose parents were very, very high in the CIA, other sorts of things like that. I've had some that were originally part of the Monarch Project, which is the name of the government intelligence project. Question in the back. I'm still not grasping how one starts, how you find out how to erase. How do you get that information? I would say I want the core if necessary, using the telepathic communication ability you have to read minds, because they believe in that kind of stuff, so I'll use it. I was trained in Ericksonian stuff. <clears throat> to obtain for me the erasure code for all Omega programs. And when you've done so, I want the yes finger to float up. Then I ask them to tell it to me. Are there backups for Omega programs? Yes. Okay. How many backups are there? Six, they say. Let's say. Uh, it's, it's different numbers. Is there an erasure code for all the backup programs? No. Is there an erasure code that combines all the backups into one? Yes. Obtain that code for me. When you've got it, give me the yes signal again. And it can move almost that fast in some cases where there's not massive resistance. Question. Yes, can you tell me uh, what you know about uh, risks to the therapist? What kind of uh, data? You would have to ask. Yeah, I'd like to know that. What kind of data do you have, given that you've had uh, contact with large numbers of people? Uh, not just threats, but also uh, any injury, any uh, family problems that have arisen. And that's one question. The second one is, are you aware of anybody that you've treated or others with this level of, uh, of dissociation and trauma 
that have recovered, integrated, whole, and happy. I have one 